nerds, it's time for Unmuted. We have your gaming and esports, hot topics, hot tweets, the spiciest memes, and AJ. I am off balance. Let's <laughs> run it down for you noobs. Uh, we're going to present some goodies that we've gathered. We'll discuss them, argue about them, yell at each other, make funny faces. And lucky for us, there's a mute button which we can press once each to shut the other up. That's right. Remember, we like it when you call us out when we're wrong and praise us when we're spitting truth. So let's get right to it. Our first story today is about Call of Duty, specifically some rumored details about the new franchise league. According to a report from the Sports Business Journal, the first season of the franchise Call of Duty World League will feature home and away games. This is much quicker compared to Activision Blizzard's other franchise esport, the Overwatch League, which is moving to a city-based system in its third season next year. Seven teams have currently been announced for the franchise CWL, and all but one are in North America. AJ, what do you think? Oh, you, you look happy. What do you think about the CWL going towards a city-based uh, franchise model in its very first season? I think it's uh, it's ambitious, but I think ultimately it's the right idea. Like, I think so. I think esports is in an interesting place because, you know, if you're someone interested in getting into it, why, which team do I root for? True. Oh, the team that's currently winning or the team that has that hot streak from the past? Oh, it's the team that my friends are rooting for. Right. Well, do I have to root for like When you have a team in your city, then you know which team you're rooting for. You're yeah. rooting for the local team that all your friends are, you know, together That's in support right. of. So I, I like this idea fundamentally. What do you it's all uh, about, think? It's all about access, right? You're yeah. going to go for the one least resistance. It's going to yeah. be easier to cheer for the team that's always in town yeah. versus the one that's across the world. I totally agree with that. Oh, so if they're only giving us teams in North America. So and far. There's Paris. Is... One Paris team oh, so far. No. The, so they're the odd the one out. Paris team in the Overwatch League. Oh, not doing uh, so hot. Okay, but it doesn't mean it'll translate. What if Paris no, and Call of Duty is freaking lit? They, they could be. <laughs> Who knows? Right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. There might be some risks associated with this. So with the Overwatch League, we're taking that as a, for, as an example, right? Well, this is the thing. They're they're doing they're local teams, it. but they're also doing local games yeah. for their tournament or for their season, I should yeah. say. Whereas in Overwatch League, we haven't haven't had that aside from the homesteads, where it's been a few um, weekends in certain. Uh, cities that have uh, teams. Yeah. But next season, their third season, is when they're actually going to be having home games yeah. and matches there. So that's an ambitious uh, The thing is, though, plan. Overwatch, I think, went with that plan because it was a new game. It was a new eSport. It had right. to build the audience in one place before it could go towards the city base. Whereas? Whereas exactly. Call of Duty has been around for a long time and is hugely popular, right? Mm. So they're very confident coming into this that their city base, you know, format is going to work. And you right. know what? I think it will. Their fan base is so huge yeah. that uh, it's a great idea, though I'm a little scared for, you know, this is a very traditional sports-based format, and I'm hesitant from an esports background of how successful it will be, but if any team, or sorry, any sport esport can do it, right. Call of Duty is probably the one. I have confidence probably. in it. Although, is it like one of the biggest, <gasps> biggest ones? Are you kidding me right now? AJ, Isn't the like numbers Dota? are huge. Yo, if you look at their social numbers, the player like personas, they have millions of followers. Like all right. the fan base is there. You need to get into it. All, all right. right. You're convinced? <coughs> Excuse me. All I'm, right, Gramps. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Getting over a cold. That's why I'm so off my rocker here. Uh, in the Overwatch League, the Hangzhou Spark have uh, fined one of their players for not reporting back after a 10-day leave of absence. Oh. DPS player Crystal took the leave because of a family illness. He was supposed to return on July 15th, but the team said it received no word from him. Crystal later apologized and explained that he was having visa issues. He also said he didn't know about the team's rules regarding requests for continued absence because no one from the team told him about it. Lisa, is the spark going a little overboard here with uh, Crystal the here? fines and everything? Yeah, they fined him. I believe it was like three times his salary for the time he was missing. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's crazy. First of all, you know this guy is having personal issues, right? And yeah. the part that really blows my mind is like he didn't even know that he was supposed to ask for permission. You know, this guy is 18 years old. Uh, I think yeah. someone actually in management needs to be held accountable here. I Not 18-year-old Crystal who's going yeah. through a personal issue here, yeah. right, in another country. I like, understand you want to set some precedents because this is all new and you want to make sure that people aren't abusing the system. But come on, the guy left because of a family issue, yeah. you know, family emergency, taking some time away yeah. from playing your professional game. Why isn't the which, like, checking Which, like, we want to add some legitimacy to <laughs> eSports 100%, <laughs> right? That's why we do this. We care about it. But also, it's just a game. It's a uh, game. Yeah. You know, don't, People are don't saying give the guy a hard time Because of the new 2-2-2 roster lock, because right. he's one of their DPS, DPS players. Means he's costing the team. Exactly. And okay. that's fair, isn't it? You're an Overwatch guy. What do you think? Yeah, it's, it's important, especially now with the 2-2-2 lock. But 
fundamentally, like, is it so hard for you to just reach out to the guy? Like, we live in the exactly. world of instant communication. If you are unavailable, yeah. you know, Call how is up. that even possible? DM him. Yeah. Slip into the DM. Oh, he's not answering his tweets. Let's try him on Instagram. He's not answering his Instagram. Let's try him on Facebook. He's not yeah. answering his Facebook. His email. Yeah. His text message. Just give the guy a friggin' phone call. I agree, I agree. Uh, Spark, the way they were handling this, the tone of the notice that they you know, publicly right. wrote out, like it sounded like they were playing victim. They're putting the blame on Crystal, who's going <laughs> through this issue. This 18-year-old is <laughs> gone for a full extra day. But AJ, it Ugh. makes you wonder, like, where is the protection for these players? Like, How is there not a team manager that, that you know was following this issue? Why yeah. is it up to this point where they're finding him for this? Where, where were they? Maybe we need to, at this you know moment, as esports is just you know burgeoning, growing, finding itself, uh, include uh, player advocates with every um, organization. Yeah. Have someone who is the player uh, yeah, advocate yeah, for sure, uh, uh, who can deal with you know managers on your behalf. 100%. Someone who's part of the team, you know, is there to work for the team, but is yeah, yeah there to make sure that the players are respected yeah. and treated well. No, I'm angry with this. I'm calling bull on the spark, all right? Yeah, we all don't right, got to mute each other there. We Let's agree. mute them. Okay, uh, four weeks are left in the LEC summer split and Misfits decided to blow up its roster and start rebuilding. The team officially let go of Soaz and Gorilla yesterday who were benched along with the rest of the starting lineup earlier this split. Misfits is currently fielding its entire academy team in place of its signed LEC team and currently sit in eighth place in the league. So this is a big move, uh, yeah. but do you feel like it's a good move? In the middle of the split to bench the entire starting lineup putting in the academy roster well, it's crazy you're gonna do it at any time now's the time right like if you've been established as one of the lesser teams and yeah. there's still half the season left as a fan this feels bad it's like what is the org doing like well, gorilla and so are veteran players okay like they're right. big names they invested so much money and time to these players the fact that they just bench them and now like ship them off it's like this does not good have good faith for the org. This makes it look really bad. Really? Yes. It's like, what are they doing? I mean, this is a great... Okay, on one hand, the academy players must be really happy that they got a chance, chance to play, yeah. right? But on the other hand, the org, at this point, they've already had a bad season. Just complete the season. Use it as a marketing strategy. You know, like, invest in something else. There's no way you can pick up from an eighth place finish now with right. only, like, what, four weeks left? So, honestly, I don't know what Misfits is doing, guys. What what are they thinking? Give them the, give them the new guys a shot, you know? Give them their chance to shine. Maybe they can, you know, rise through the season ranks. Obviously, they're not going to make it to the finals or anything, but they can... You know, get that experience under their belt. If they've got, if they've picked up these players, have an academy team, give them the opportunity. If you're, you know, yeah. main team is yeah. sucking it up. But now the academy team has a t are in a tough spot because they're left in eighth place and they have to climb as hard as they can to like make up for it. You right. know what I That's mean? That's the experience that they need that they will, you know, have going forward in their careers. I, I don't know. It doesn't seem like that bad a play to me. But then again, I am not as engrossed in the uh, League of Legends scene as you are, so. AJ. What? So as, so it's as. like season one, okay, veteran. He's right. been on Fnatic, Origin at its peak. So he peak. sounds like he's he, really old now. Are you, you wanna talk about age, AJ? You wanna talk about age? That's, I brought it up. Oh, so, oh, can, oh, so you do wanna talk about, about age. <laughs> no, you can't set yourself up for there. a self burn. That doesn't make sense. It's television, that's how it works. Oh, it's not scripted, wait, what do you mean? This is not I'm, scripted. I know, but it's, ever, it's <laughs> obviously, let's move on. <laughs> Our last story, PUBG is adding Sanok to its competitive esports map pool, joining the already existing Erangel and Miramar. I love how they actually spelled Erangel phonetically for me, as though I <laughs> haven't spent over a thousand hours playing PUBG. Plenty of players aren't happy about the move, though, because they think it needs major updates to be competitively viable. PUBG's director of esports, Jake Sin, great name, said that he knows teams will need to change their strategies for Sanok, but he thinks this will make events much more interesting. Lisa, what do you think of adding a new map to the pool, one that pros aren't so uh, enthusiastic about in the middle of a competitive season? Are there ever pros that are happy with changes? Like, I feel like they're always complaining. Mm. Always complaining. Oh, you're, you're, you're changing by giving us more money? Well, we're happy about that. Well, yeah, that's, that's probably the only good change. I don't know uh, why I had a phone to say that, but I, I think did. I mean, to be fair, pros put a lot of hours into practicing certain maps. I get it. Certain yeah. comps, I get it. But 
The I game developers just... want to keep it interesting. And yeah. that's why people watch, guys. Pros, if you want to have your job last longer, you and need to keep it interesting. Sanox, awesome. I don't know what yeah? their Tell issue... Yeah, more about it. Actually, I don't know much about this map. Sanox is the smallest of the maps. Uh -huh. uh, it was the third one released. It's a jungle map. Um, yeah, so like your typical PUBG match on Erangel or Miramar, they're going to be much longer. Yeah. Uh, the circle comes in much faster on Sandhawk. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's a few areas that are a lot more um, intense than... Aaron Gell, well, there's, how, how do I put this? There's a more focused, like, uh, boot camp in the center of Sandhawk. Okay. It's like, if everyone hot drops there, your match could be over relatively really? quickly. Um, and then there's also um, uh, Palace up on the right, and yeah. there's a few other places that are like the, the super hot drops, yeah. whereas Aaron Gell and Miramar are a lot more like areas that are spaced so out. So it sounds like the new map is almost guaranteeing a lot of action, but yeah. I think from the pro's perspective, it's like, why, what are the benefits of starting this in the middle of a season, you know? Like, why now? Mixing why not wait? Mixing it up, generating it up. some hype, uh, bring in Sandhawk. I don't understand why it wasn't yeah. in, in there in the first place. This reminds me of the Overwatch League, right, with their new roster lock. Because yeah. it's basically every esport is trying to find that balance between making the game competitive, but also interesting to watch. Mm -hmm. And obviously, people don't like stalemates. They don't yeah. like waiting for action. So they, this is, like, and obviously, they're just trying to make it happen. If you've got four maps in PUBG now, why not have, like, if they were only using Erangel and Miramar for, you know, competitive, competitive play, yeah. They ought to add Vicandi and they ought to add uh, just Sandhawk. More. Variety is just better? Absolutely. I agree, but it's just like timing wise, again. Maybe there's a big tournament happening like soon. Yeah, they want to just spice it up, get it interesting. They want to set it up for like crazy things to happen. And yeah. this map is basically it. So, I mean, well, I don't we're fault them. talking about it. It's, it. You know, the media is focusing it's true. on it. You know, it's true. I don't fault the developers, but the pros, I understand, they're upset. Mm. That's fair, right? Change. All yeah. right. <laughs> Let's move on. It's time to check in with streamers in Clip It. Our first clip is a little infuriating. Uh, Twitch streamer Blondie Wandy is pulled over for speeding, but learns nothing from the experience. Thank you. Who's gonna be warning tonight? Okay. I'm really sorry. I missed it, like the freeway entrance back there. So I'm not familiar with this area. I'm from North Ogden, so. Gotcha. Yeah, there's two ways. You can either turn around, and go back, and you can back, get on it here, or you can go down this way. Thank you. I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that was really, it might have been. I don't know. He saw the Blondie Wandy sticker. I hope he subs to me. Come okay, so good news, everyone. She has been banned. Uh, bad news is that she probably won't learn her lesson, it sounds yeah. like. She was very happy at the end there for getting out of a ticket. I counted two. I'm really sorry about that from her before. <laughs> Wait, she's not an actor. Yo, someone give her an Oscar for that, though. Actually, yeah. she sounded really sincerely she's up She's been like, banned from Twitch, but she's been signed by an agency in the U.S. She's going to be on a new CW series soon. Frick, this is just our world, isn't it? This is literally Twitch. This is the problem with Twitch I mean, right now. Thing too, it's like, up to oh, yeah, too. she's been banned. Oh, no, she's going to come back in a month with, with the more followers, more probably. Followers followers because of the popularity of this clip and a whole bunch of dudes seeing you see that hot girl get pulled over by the cops on Twitch? Yeah. Yeah. Blondie Wandy. That's not good for the stereotypes either. I already don't like her just because of the name. Okay, that's a little <laughs> presumption. What? 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 You're Blondie basically a Wandy. blonde. I don't know. It's just so on the nose. Okay. okay. So Let's you're criticizing I'm in name. grandpa <laughs> mode now. I'm tired. Our next clip is, uh, it requires a bit of context. Speaking of old guys, uh, former Blizzard developer David uh, Brevik and his wife were asked a question about uh, what went wrong with the World of Warcraft movie. I could answer that in depth. Uh, David responded that it failed because of Blizzard's Vagenda. <clears throat> Did you hear that right? It is Vagenda. You guys, you heard it right, Vagenda. Yeah, Vagenda. Yes. JQ so savage tonight, poor David. It's Grisnich. Your, vine, your vagina's ad agenda. Your vagenda. That's exactly that's exactly how things happen in our household. My vagina <laughs> decides what we do, and then we all do it. <laughs> that sounds like my life, you know? My, mm. my, my relationship. No, I'm joking. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, this word does not sound appealing. No, vagina sounds like something made up by incels, you know, in basements discussing some sort of worldwide female conspiracy. <laughs> I mean, we are out to get you guys. Wait, you, you, you know about our plan? 
I don't know. I'm uh, so far all my experiences with women have been great. So yes! if you guys are out to get us, I'm happy to play along. Hold on, okay. I mean, I know there was a lot of flack with this movie, but are they World saying? Warcraft? Yeah. Yeah, that's like, where the, I was confused why bring, by the saying. Why are they making because... this now a women female issue? Like it's our fault? Why is it always our fault? What did I, we do I feel now? Like the, the <laughs> fundamental issue with the World of Warcraft movie was its lack of fun. I mean, World of Warcraft as an experience is a fun game of getting five friends together to have a fun time going on an adventure. And yeah. Warcraft the movie was just a two-hour experience of trying to make orcs versus humans a seriously dramatic issue mm -hmm. where it could have taken the Marvel film approach and just made it like a fun Guardians of the Galaxy type film of a whole bunch of people who come from different backgrounds who have nothing in common figuring out how to work together. Oh, you're going to mute me? In my... <laughs> I'm scared. You, you, got, you got your point through? I think. You were off like ranting. I was worried uh, you were going to take the whole show there. As, as a fan of World of Warcraft, I was disappointed fundamentally. You're with, a fan, I would have never guessed. I played so many hours of World of Warcraft. I was being sarcastic. Okay. All right, let's move on. It's truly the best time of the day when we stroll through the Twitterverse to bring you all the things pros bless us from their timelines. Our first tweet from Street Fighter Pro Alex Myers, and it may trigger some foodies. He says... All right, Californians only glorify in and out because they've never had Shake Shack before. <gasps> dun, dun, dun! Are you ready for this debate, Lisa? Have you had oh, both? Oh, I am very passionate about this topic. I wonder okay. if we're going to agree. All right, on the count of three, you say who you're voting for, like whose side you're on, okay? Sure. Three, two, one, Shake Shack. <gasps> All right. Oh! Oh my God, we can't be friends. Okay, make your point right now, because I'm about to ruin you. Go. I spent so long in Indianapolis in line for Shake Shack that I just hated it. You're complaining about the line? The milkshake was very good, though. <laughs> the okay, then I think was, I just won. It was very good. I'm going to say but it right In-N-Out now. Burger is no. just fast, easy, and delicious. Oh, so you like it fast and easy. I see. So you have low standards. When it comes to food <laughs> and burgers. Um, no. Okay, I'll give you In-N-Out burgers are like mid-tier. Like, it's fine. It does the job. Fine. But the fries is garbage. Animal style is garbage. Anyone who says that animal style makes it much better, it's only because it's like slop that hides the taste of the nasty fries like you know what I mean it's like a cover-up in and out is disgusting I'm sorry in and out but you guys need to step up Shake Shack so much better I literally had it last style? night oh my god you don't even know what animal style all is. right moving on our next tweet is from commentator Veli who is letting us know the proper way to sleep he tweets real ones sleep with their feet outside of the blanket Wow, he's a wild one. All right, one, two, three. Do we sleep with our feet outside of the blanket or not? One, two, three. No, because no. I'm not crazy. What about the monsters? It's it's weird. It's it's like vulnerable. I, yeah, I sleep with just my butt outside of the blanket. What do you do? What are you waiting for <laughs> the monsters to do? Well, funny you should ask. Oh my uh, God, <laughs> this is not a kid show, but I don't want to hear the no, rest of that. I, I don't know. <laughs> Apparently, I toss the blankets off of me all the time in the night. My wife says, really? like, yeah, I'm pretty sure she steals them from me. Oh, so she, it's a cover up. It's a story that yeah, she's telling I don't know. you. We got to set up a camera and watch ourselves sleep. It's her so agenda. Get to the yeah, into this <laughs> mystery. Good callback there. There you go. All right, let's move on to our last tweet because Double Lift is asking a tough question. He asks. Would you rather have pork chop hands or T-bone steak feet? Mm. Ooh, yo, we got the fire tweets today. Are we gonna count three here and uh, decide? I would rather have Shake Shack feet. Well, mm. Shake Shack is better, but <laughs> I'm confused because now you're switching sides and I'm, I'm like on guard here. Uh, no, which one would you rather pork have? Chop, like, if I had pork chop hands, I'd constantly want to eat them. So what I would rather have feet. Well, they're so far, I'm not gonna notice them. Well, you can't would... put your feet to your mouth? I, uh, probably not. I'm not that flexible. <laughs> really? And also, I wouldn't be paying attention because my feet would just... Uh, how no. often do I look at my own feet? Almost never. Oh, wait, but you're in esports and gaming. How does that make sense? You should always be looking at your feet. Your feet should really be the priority of everything. Is no? she attempting to be sarcastic right no, now? No, I'm legit. This time. Can you not tell, guys? <laughs> what? No, but for the record, steak uh -huh. bone feet is the way to go. I think it's sturdy. Yeah. It's good. The pork chop hands. How are you going to game? That's yeah. just the bottom line. <laughs> well, I kind of game like that anyways. Actually, okay. All right, let's move on. It's time to get to some crowd control. This is where we showcase some of the great or dank things that the community has been making or in this first post case achieving. Uh, let's give a big round of applause to Astro Creeping for receiving a prestigious award. Ooh. Dubbed the Game Changer, Astro Creeping was given this plaque engraved with the words, thanks for reorganizing the asset room and making sure everyone has their lease refresh or new employee laptop faster than they ever have. 
Oh. And someone like found an old piece of wood, glued a <laughs> PS controller to it. That's worth money. Engraved a plaque and handed it to That's him. That's really sweet though. There you go. But I'm really like confused. What does this guy do for as a job? Like lease refresh assets. Sounds like he works in IT. Yeah. Oh, like oh that would make sense. Like for a the company's controller. IT guy, you know, like oh. living in the back room there. And, <laughs> but that kind of anyway. sucks having the controller stuck to a plaque. You can't use that. Unless no, you plug that in. It's probably a broken old controller. Oh, that's a crappy award. But I wouldn't mind actually like mounting all my gaming controllers on the wall. Just as like a, oh, you know. You have too many. That's a sign you have way too many, I AJ. do have way too many controllers. I have four Duck, Xbox controllers. So many Nintendo controllers. PlayStation. There's so many. Okay. It, would, it would decorate that's my a humble, That's a flex right there, guys. Um, let's move on. Uh, time for a Rate My Setup post. We love these because it lets us judge. So let's see it. Okay, so we got a simple setup, but it gets the job done. Well, I guess you get the job done. It looks crappy. <laughs> no, so the stand on wheels, let's see, makes it easy to adjust the distance, right? If you need more room, plus the rolls uh, of toilet paper. If you get shat on in game, toilet oh, paper right there. Secondary purpose. That's, right there, guys. That's an interesting idea. I've never, <laughs> I don't think I've ever brought my Nintendo Switch into the toilet with me. Wait, 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 wait. So it's a mobile, like, console that you've yeah. never taken to the bathroom? Wait, I what do you know. do in the bathroom? When do you? Usually just poop. Yeah, but don't you need entertainment? While I poop? Yeah. Uh, pooping's pretty entertaining in and of itself. What is happening? Is your poop dancing? Is it singing? Is it? Yours uh, doesn't. I wish. I'm a creative person. Yeah, I know you've been taking a lot of NyQuil recently. Anything that comes out of me is just uh, of it's a performance. <laughs> AJ! Our last post where we attempt to box you into one of two categories. We haven't done enough of that already. According to comic artist The Flandrew, there are only two types of Pokemon trainers. Number one, oh my god, it's Mewtwo. I must plan this carefully. I'll start by lowering its HP with Super Fang, then put it to sleep or maybe freeze it. Shall I use Ultra Balls or Timer Balls? Type number two. There it is, fire. Is it dead? <laughs> and which type are you, Lisa? Can you guess? You're probably the, there it is, fire. <gasps> Excuse me, why would you think that? That's how you act with me on Unmuted. There it is, fire. That you is know. true, that is true, but There's it's no different. hesitation. It's a, Just I attack right No, away. I take Pokemon training very seriously, guys, okay? Very like, seriously. I am there. I caught a rare Pokemon recently, yeah. and I planned it, actually. I had the ability, false swipe, guys. Where it only, it never kills it all the way, it leaves one HP left. And it guarantees an easy capture for every Pokemon. There you go. See, I'm very serious. Uh, you didn't know? No, I don't know. I, my experience with Pokemon is pretty limited. I was just a little too old. Get out of there! There's no room for people who don't play Pokemon. Sorry, guys. All right, that's it for Unmuted. Remember, you can always hit us up on our socials at Squad State to say hi or send us stuff to react to. Someone type in exclamation socials right now on the channels to get all our social media. Until then, we'll see ya.